We'll do a yield criteria problem with both Tresca and von Mises. And so you see that the normal stresses on both faces have the same value. Part A, B, and C, they're going to slowly increase from 200 up to, eight, up to 280 megapascals. And this material has a yield stress of 325 megapascals. Also present is the 100 megapascals of shear stress. And uh, to take note, this is a plain stress element. So thinking of this in terms of some coordinates, x, y, this would say that sigma z is equal to 0. I'm going to choose to solve this problem using Moore's circle. And we are looking for principal stresses, sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3. That's what we need to proceed to into the yield criteria. So I'll start with part A with the state of stress. So redrawing the stress block with xy coordinates. 200 is in compression on both the x and y face. And I need the initial stress point. So on the x point, got negative 200. Shear stress on the x face that shear stress would cause the element to rotate counterclockwise. Down here on Moore's circle, clockwise is positive. On the Y face, we're going to have, again, negative 200 and a positive 100 for shear stress. And the Z point is going to lie at 0, 0 with no stress. So we'll plot these points. We've got a scale on here, about 100 increments. So we'll plot the two points down here would be the x point. That would be at minus 200 comma minus 100. Up here would be the y point minus 200 plus 100. And might as well plot the z point sitting there at 0. So with those two points, we can go ahead and draw the entire circle over here. Clearly, the center is going to be at minus 200. Easy to see that the radius is equal to 100. So the in-plane principal stresses are going to be the center plus r and the center minus r. So sigma 1 working right to left on Moore circle. Sigma 1 would be sitting over here at the Z point, Sigma 2, and Sigma 3. So we just need to get those numerically. Sigma 1, 0. Sigma 2 is going to be the center plus R equal to minus 100. Sigma 3 is going to be minus 200 minus 100, so the center minus R. So those are the three principal stresses. So off the equation sheet, the Tresca criteria involves sigma 1 minus sigma 3, comparing it to sigma yield. So I, I like to think of this term as the demand on the material. This obviously is the capacity of the material. And we're going to compare the two. So sigma 1 minus sigma 3, keeping track of your double negatives, and this gives us 300. Uh, versus a capacity of 325. So the demand does not exceed the capacity, so we have no yielding, and we have a factor of safety of 1.08. The equation for the von Mises yield criteria, right? if the function exceeds 0, then we have yielding. So looking at the plug of the numbers, sigma 1 is 0, so that goes away. See the 0 below. Plugging in for sigma 2, Right, keeping track of your double negatives. Again, a double negative becomes more important there with a negative 100 plus 300. And then you have twice the yield stress squared. So go ahead and multiplying that out, we find that number it exceeds the 1400. Excuse me, exceeds 140,000, sorry. And so we end up with a negative total on the left hand side and that would be less than zero therefore there is no yielding anticipated with von Mises and that would make sense 
Von Mises is more conservative than Tresca, and we found that there was no yielding with Tresca. So the factor of safety is a little more involved for Von Mises. Right? Thinking of it in terms of the capacity divided by the demand. Right? We have a little bit of work to do to find the demand. So if we go back up here, we think of equating right, to sigma yield. So it's going to take a little bit of work. We're going to take that term to the other side. Going to have to divide by 2 and then take the square root. That's what is ultimately going to be measured as the demand to compare to sigma yield. So that term, again, a little tricky. That's the term that we just found out that was 140,000. That was why I kept track of that number. We're going to multiply that by one half and then take the square root of the entire quantity. That gives us a number of 264.6. So the factor of safety is the capacity divided by the demand. And so we end up with a factor of safety of 1.23. That factor of safety is bigger than the factor of safety that we found uh, using Tresca. And that would make sense as von Mises, as we said just a moment ago, is more conservative. So moving on to part B, the normal stress is equal to 240 on each phase. Shear stress is still the same. We continue to be in the plane stress condition. So the x and y coordinates, the only thing that's changing is the normal stress. So essentially what's happening is this circle is moving to the left. So when we plot those two points and the z point still, but the center of the xy circle, the in plane, is going to be at minus 240. Previous problem is it was at minus 200. The radius is still going to be equal to 100. And so we'll be able to calculate the principal stresses right, working right to left. First one, the most tensile, it happens to be zero, is sigma one. Next would be sitting right here. That's going to be sigma two. And over on the left-hand side of the circle would be sigma three. So use the same formula. This is just the center plus r. And this is just the center minus r. So looking at Tresca, going to calculate sigma 1 minus sigma 3, get 340, which is bigger than sigma yield. And so the demand has exceeded the capacity, so yield is now predicted. There's no factor of safety to calculate. Von Mises, so we have the exact same formula from before. The only thing that's changed, sigma 2 and sigma 3. See those values in there? Being careful with your calculator, instead of 140,000, now about 175, 200. And subtracting twice sigma yield squared, we get a negative number. It's definitely a smaller number. So we are uh, approaching the yield surface, but we still have not reached it yet. So we have no yield for von Mises. So the factor of safety, right? remember that term below. Is going to be that sum of the difference squareds. So it's the number that we got over here multiplied by one half, taking the square root. We end up with a factor of safety of 1.1. You know, we're approaching uh, a factor of safety of one, which is when we would expect yielding to occur. So for part C, the normal stress on both faces is now increased to 280 megapascals in compression. So the x point normal stress and the y point normal stress have changed. Sigma z still sits at zero. Uh, the z point still sits at zero zero. So on more circle plotting those points. X point. The y point. The radius still remains the same on this circle. The only thing that's changed is that circle moving to the left. Now the center sits at minus two eighty. So principal stress is 0, minus 180, and minus 380. Again, that's just center plus r and center minus r. So we've got sigma 2, sigma 3, sigma 1. So for Tresca, we already know that yielding has been predicted. So 
it would only be increasing uh, the sigma 1 minus sigma 3. So the demand is only increasing, so the yielding remains. For von Mises, we end up running through our numbers, right? changing sigma 2 and sigma 3. So keeping track of that left-hand side right, in two distinct quantities, right? that number right, represents the sum of all the squared values and multiply, or subtracting twice sigma yield squared, we end up with a positive number, which is not less than zero. So we now have predicted yielding with von Mises.